Mrs. Thatcher Ministries. Okay, we're live. Stay home. Can you see your face okay there? No, it's on the zoomed in. Do you want me to put that, it on the regular? Is that? Um, yeah, that's better. Is that right? The, here at that, yeah. yeah. There we go. Okay. Hey, Ashley. I think it's on yours that we can see who's on there. I, I'm looking. I'm looking at it. How's everyone doing this Sunday? Hey, Joe. It's good to see you. I'm hey, going. Carolyn. Hey, Dr. Zoe. Yeah. Hey, Deborah. Here, here, here. All right. We'll get you set up. You ready? Mm -hmm. Just a bag. Okay. Let me get a drink. All right. All right, Linda's going to be with you in just a moment. Because I've been crying. Uh -huh. Make sure you can see your face when that was yeah. Hi, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for another time together. Rachel's getting us all straight, not just bounce my hair all over the place. I pray everybody's had a good day, a good weekend. I've tried to keep up with you and Lisa Hill, good it. Hi, honey. Thank you for coming on. What what time is it? Oh, five, we've got four minutes. I'm just so glad to be here and what's going to happen tonight only. God knows it's going to be good. It's going to be good. We just thank the Lord. Deborah Pickering, honey, hi. Penny Flynn, Lisa Hill. We have several Lisas, several Deborah, several Lindas. Several, I mean, just uh, we just we just love you all. Masters have love from Colorado. We love Colorado and all all the people coming in from Colorado too. Um, oh, I, I, this phone over here. I uh, like a minute after I say something here, it's over here going across. <laughs> across but i'm trying to keep up with joe davis honey hi she, um simona honey hi christina this is a, this is wonderful my friends i think i i just love you. you're part of my fa our family rachel feel they rachel logan feel the same way like we're all part of one family yeah. and really we are with the lord and dr zo uh and uh abby and angela and there's a, we have a, Carolyn, honey, thank you for coming in with us. I just, we've got a, we have a lot going on tonight. Thank you, Lord. I never know. Alina, wonderful evening with the whole, yes, we're going to have a wonderful evening with the, it's all the Holy Spirit. I'm empty. He has to do it all or it's not done. Deborah Huggins, we have several Debras and Will. Hi, Will. Thank you for your sweet note. Um, my back is feeling better. Thank you, Lord. Simona, when it's totally healed, and I'm saying it's totally healed, send in the testimony in the name of Jesus that God Almighty, even right now, while we're while we're right here doing this, the Lord sending healing out. He is, for by his stripes we are healed in Jesus' name. We've had several testimonies come in this week. I'm so grateful for them. The greatest testimony of all is a soul into the kingdom that's the greatest testimony the greatest gift anyone could ever give someone is that they found jesus through something we've done here on master's touch ministries and the next is getting you baptized in the holy spirit in the power and fire mm -hmm. to go and do the bat to please say a special prayer for dawn okay I couldn't read anymore. Something about pressure. I could. It just came up. Have a special prayer for Dawn. We're praying for Dawn and whatever's going on. We plead the blood. We bind the devil and we release them. Who? Whatever's going on right now. We plead the blood of Jesus. 
We bind the enemy, this whatever's going on, and we destroy it. We stop it. We bind it. We cast it out. We close all doors. We ask for the Holy Spirit to come in and intervene. I'm not sure what's going on, but thank you, Lord, that you're intervening. And peace, the peace of God is coming in and resting in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Justin, honey, thank you for coming. And you played that piece of music sometime during the night, and I listened to it this morning. Sometime during the day, I did listen to it. It's beautiful. Justin's on every week, and he lives in, I'm not sure what state he's in, but he has, he has his own um, room set up, and he plays beautiful music. Um, the keyboard, and I'm not sure what all he plays, but and I, I assume he sings and plays at his church, too, because he talks about their music a lot. It's 8.30, so we welcome the Holy Spirit. I welcome everyone coming on tonight. We welcome you. We're so thankful for you. We thank God for you. We thank the Lord that we're connecting with each other in the name of, and with the Holy Spirit. The power of Jesus Christ is going to be on this on in this tonight, and everything that goes on is going to be Him because I have surrendered it all to Him, and he, whatever comes out now is His, and I just thank Him for that. I am starting off by pleading the blood of Jesus. Over every home, every life, over every word coming out of this ministry tonight, that the blood of Jesus is covering this whole ministry permanently, forever, and every life that comes under it, that you are covered and protected by the blood of Jesus Christ. And now we welcome the Holy Spirit, and I'm asking every Krista, Krista Johnson, honey, thank you for coming on, Pate McCoy. I'm asking everyone right now to repent. Take time to repent and ask for forgiveness for anything. And even ask the Lord to bring things up that you need to be repent or forgive people for. It's his business. This is this stops the flow of the spirit in your life. And God wants to do mighty things and and that we have to go before humble, humbly before him. Because we all mess up. That's why he's our savior. But he expects us to come and ask him to forgive us and cleanse us and, and strengthen us in that area this week and sanctifies in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. So that we welcome the Holy Spirit to do a mighty work in your life and all of your loved ones' lives tonight. And anyone that will be watching YouTube, because there's a lot of people just wait now because it's late on Sunday night, and they're watching YouTube. For, I don't know if it's all old or no, I don't even know, but they're, I'm getting messages that they're doing that. So I'm thankful, God, for the YouTube. Any way to get Jesus out, and whatever, anything that would bless somebody's life, I'm just thanking God because it's all him. All glory, all praise goes back to the Lord, the master, uh, master and king, Jesus Christ. Uh, today's my grandson's, my identical twin's grandson's 16th birthday. They both got their driver's license just recently. And they were, it was just, good night, Rachel. Good night, and thank you, honey. I love I you. Love Be you. careful going home. Thank you. So I just had to say that. And a lot of you wish them a happy birthday. And the picture I put on, the, the pictures of them are probably two or three years back. I couldn't find, I don't know. I get one here and one there. So anyway, I just want, that's such a joy. And that's the end of their children made them seven when they had those precious twins. Oh, my goodness. So the blood, the word, the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ himself will be glorified here tonight in the name of Jesus. Now, I'm, I named this tonight. I think she named this tonight. The, uh, it's about the olive press. I think I mentioned that last week. We were going, we, we've been about the axe head falling off, and that's your anointing. People lose the anointing, get back in the water, get that axe head, and start flowing in the spirit again. Repent and go back where you lost it. So, and now we're going on to the olive press. Uh, when we get into the where I share, because I don't consider myself, I share how the Lord has taught me and, and, and through other teachers and through my own experiences with Him and through the Word of God. It's all Him. Every, if you get anything it's, and it makes life, it's from Him in Jesus' name. I, I want to, uh, we had 13 new page likes this week and 17 new followers, which is wonderful. Thank God for every one of them. And the countries that, uh, the European countries, we still don't hear from, but they're all getting it. The ones that are still ranking at the top are uh, Armenia, Mag Mag Madagascar, De uh, Timor, Leste, which is the coast of uh, uh, the Ivory Coast. India, Nepal, New Guinea, Philippines, Ethiopia, Pakistan, and and 
who knows what else, but that's the ones they've listed. So we just thank God for those countries and we pray God's blessing them, moving by the Spirit, uses anything he can out of here to bring them into the kingdom, to anoint them with the, baptize them in the Holy Spirit, immerse them in the Spirit of God, immerse them in the gifts and the fruit of the Spirit first and the gifts of the Spirit operating together that changes lives forever in Jesus' name. First Corinthians 12, 13, and 14, and love has to be in the middle of the center and the head of all of it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, so some of the pastors, and I'm, and they're not pastors. Some of them are just people watching that are getting blessed by watching this. These are foreign country, um, ASIF. Um, he's been, uh, he's been watching us for a while, and the Lord is blessing him. And it's K H A I L D is the last. No, that ASIF is a young man, young man that's in love with the Lord and following us a lot. And he's put pictures on here of what's going on in his ministry. And then there's a lady that's going to be joining in tonight. I believe she's from India, Pakistan. And it's S-I-A-M-A. -A. And she said she would be joining in. And she was so thankful to find us. And her last name is K-H-A-I-L-D. We don't take this lightly. God Almighty is connecting us with people around the world. And your prayers and your agreement when I'm praying for everybody that ever watches this is changing people's lives so you are part of everything that's going on and then o-t-i-e-n-o's been watching us s-h-a-k-i-d and simon he's been he's been following us for a while zayna Goffan, and michelle and then s-a-j-i-d uh b-h-a-t-t-i and they and he's they're real active a lot of them are messaging us praying for us thanking us and we just thank the Lord for that I want to re remind you to keep praying for the two children we're praying for that were born that needed uh, some healing before they were born and they they need miraculous healings and I'm asking you to stay with them that the Lord goes to the cellular level the genetic level the um, endocrine glands everything and restores and heals these two children completely like miraculously even tonight while we're on here Lord in Jesus' name. And then uh, Don just sent in a prayer request uh, to pray. So we've, ar we've already done that. Y'all agree with me. The Lord's moving in there. There's a MAR that's suffering with uh, G5 microwave and all that kind of stuff. And she needs a miracle. She's an older woman. She's a Christian. And we ask God to remove that. We bind and break it off her. And we ask the, her nervous system, nothing about her re reacts to any of that ever again. And then we've got... Um, a uh, Randy that's, uh, there's several people with this cough, this really messing their throat up, a woman and a man that has been going on and they've been to the doctor, they've been tested and all this and antibiotics. We command their throats to be healed and the dry coughs to go in Jesus name. Um, let's see. And Tim, um, yes, we just got a cr uh, urgent I can't take calls within an hour of this meeting, but this came in urgent. Um, on, on, I think that's it. I'm not sure. And it's a Tim, his colon bursted. He's young. He's a young man. And he's, they took him straight into emergency surgery. You pray, God, he gets no infection and that this young man lives. In Jesus' name. It's an absolutely incredible disaster that happened there. And no one, who knows why. Now, the people, I, you know, I pray for some people each week, but I try to share this, and this is helping people. And I broke numerology off of someone that had been into numerology. If you're into numerology, it's demo there is a demonic occult practice of numerology. So be sure. You know, I know in the Bible, three says some numbers that are very specific, but this numerology, you're depending on it. It's a, if you're in the cult side, you better repent and get it out and don't even look at it to confuse yourself anymore. That came out of a person this week. Rudeness, a person that's just rude and can't keep friends. Well, rudeness was one of the things that came out. Then I got a fickle spirit out of someone. Some of these, several came out of the same person than other people. Daydreaming. This person was having problems with relationships. He's married with other women. And he daydream, was daydreaming about him, couldn't get, get it off. 
God broke that and got that out of that man yeah. in Jesus' name. Old flames. I guess old flames. See, I'm, I'm not doing them in order because something they use it as a straw man under the pocket and you just get one. You keep on going. Then they get rid of the, the, the one that started it all to start with. Or sometimes you never know, but you just depend on the Holy Spirit for wisdom and his knowledge on and truth in any, any time you're dealing with anybody. Then I got a vulgar spirit out of a person that's been very loose trying to be healed and, and soul restored, depression and anxiety, and uh, lust, and then uh, birth defects. The Lord gave me this, and I, and I, someone, it's going to be several people that need to hear this. If you are pregnant, and you're carrying a baby, and they tell you that this baby is having birth defects, has birth defects, you lay your hand on your stomach, get other people that are godly spirit filled, and break the powers of birth defect off that baby. I mean that because we've seen too many miracles doing this. If we can get it, um, you know, if we get it, get it before the baby is born. I am now going ahead of all of my children and grandchildren until Jesus comes and y'all, but you need to do it for your own family. And I'm breaking all birth defects out of the bloodline permanently. And closing every door permanently. You do this. I'm trying. I've been teaching y'all how to do stuff that I've learned. I don't consider myself. I, I share, but you can go ahead of the enemy when you know there's places he tries to get in. And on a baby, of course, it's serious. So go ahead and start breaking it off of your bloodline and any bloodline coming into your family, into your your kid people, because they can come in from all directions and command it to stay on, and you stay there till you you feel that baby set free because it's the demonic spirit attacking that baby. Uh, I want to read, I want to make sure I get, before I read the scripture that I get everything I wanted to say here. Uh, we're going to be talking about the olive oil, oil press, the olive oil press tonight. And I was, um, I just happened to go on the internet because I taught on this several times years and years ago. Um, and I went on the internet looking up like the first century. How, what did they do in the first century? Like the oil press, getting the oil out of the olives. And I'm just going to give this before I go on any further because we're going to read scripture and, 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 and pray. Well, whatever the Lord shows next. But anyway, yeah, this, this came from Nazareth Village on the internet. And the man's name was, it sounded like he said Maze. And I wrote M-A-Z. That sound like that was the name. And it's called the 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 olive oil. It's called the olive press is what the title was in there. And he says in the first century, this is the way they did it. Um, he says the olive press connects to Gethsemane. And then he tells why and how. It comes from two Hebrew words. Now, I was just listening to what he said, and, and I tried to spell it the way he said it. Got to me. And it's pressing all forth. It's what that means, that word Gethsemane. And the two Hebrew words together means pressing all forth. And so the way they, what they did, they would gather the olives off the tree. They had to be ripe and soft. And I'm going to go into this in detail in just a few minutes. And then, um, and they put it through three presses. I'm not going to say a lot here, just what... I want to tell you what he said the first century because it's kind of changed through the time. There was a donkey that had a, a stone that went around and around. It, the stone weighed a thousand pounds. And then they'd take it and they, and they had to crush the, the olive and the pulp had to be crushed too to get the good oil. And then it, it, then it's other pro they went through three processes. And he said the way this is connected with Gethsemane they they go three go through three processes to get the the oil all the oil out, and he said Jesus prayed three times in Gethsemane, and actually the oil press this oil press means Gethsemane into with the two Hebrew words, and he said the demonstration of Jesus Christ being pressed in Gethsemane, and he prays and he prayed three times like they pressed three times, and he got the oil out, and he sweat blood. Because he was pressured so, being pressed in Gethsemane. 
And of course, all of that in the end became so we can so we can have the Holy Spirit anointed after the whole process was over. But it was just amazing how he said has said that. And he said, and Isaiah says he was crushed for our iniquities. And when you go on, you realize that what they do, they, they first shake the tree. They beat the tree, then shake the tree, and then crush it. It's the same three things. Jesus, oh, and the Father and the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and, then, and then there's three levels of this oil. And he, he says the first, which is amazing, the first, the purest oil comes out first. It's at the bottom. Because they put all this in baskets, like 15 up, and then press two feet down. And the first oil comes out at the bottom, and um, it's called, um, it's the purest oil, and it, it went to the temple to, to worship and offer to God. You understand you are the temple. So that first oil uh, of all of it is, is the Holy Spirit. That's why it's the most precious. That first oil was always offered to God. So that if whatever he gives you, the first offer everything back to him. Everything back to him. It, it went to the temple for worship. And to, and to go into the temple for worship and offer to God. That's a picture of us with the Holy Spirit. We, um, there's nothing better than the than that fresh oil, and then the second level of oil was made for food, for medicine. It's what the Holy Spirit does for us. Perfume, yes, the Holy Spirit brings the pre presence of uh, essence of Jesus into our lives. He's our food. He's our healer, and then the third level. These were the three levels. The third was the oil in the lamp and the soap. And of course, the Holy Spirit cleanses us. And the oil in the lamp is the Holy Spirit inside of us. It's just, a, it's just, it's just a wonderful. And we're going to go, I'm going to go all the way through that in just a few minutes. It's called crushing the olives. Not just the olives, but the pit also. Till there's nothing left but the oil. It's a cycles. It's a picture of a born again believer. After God with everything in them, willing to sacrifice everything to know him. It's that oil we're after, the pure oil of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. I want to, I've got several testimonies, but um, I want, I'm not going to read them first. I might not even get to them. I don't know. We'll see. What I want to tell you to, you know how I've been sharing with you to take the word, let the Holy Spirit speak to you <clears throat> in the word. The word is life. The word changes you. The word reflects Jesus Christ into you and changes you into his image. But you've got to take it in and digest it. Dig read it and digest it till it becomes food for you. Not just something here. But it gets into your spirit, into your soul, and becomes part of you. Well, this week, this is what I got, and, I, and I've been praying it over all of us. And it's Psalms 4, 7. Now I've used the King James Version. I could use other, but I am telling you, there's so many. There's too many for me not to use the King James Version to check everything. Because one word will change the punchline, the punch of it. And so this one says, Lord, lift thou up the, thy light of thy countenance upon us. Oh, I said, God, you want to lift your countenance upon, countenance upon us. So I went and looked up what countenance means. And it's divine glory. It's what Moses prayed over the children of Israel when he was sending them in to be blessed. It's divine glory. And then just Webster says, it's to be accepted, to be approved, to be cared for, to be favored. So I'm praying this. I'm binding it into us every morning. Lord, I thank you that your countenance, countenance is coming, is, is upon us, and we're walking in it daily for your glory. And you, you take the word, let it become life to do, then use it. And the word takes you to prayer from the spirit. 
not the head, the spirit. I got into the spirit with this. Even think, talking to you just did. It's coming right from my heart that God's releasing his countenance upon you and me and our loved ones, all of our loved ones. And anyone watching this, that the countenance of God comes upon them and that the divine glory is imparted into them. And then the, the next, right under the next verse of Psalm 7, 8, I get so excited. I, it's like jewels to me. It's like riches. It's like gold. It's like more valuable than anything this world has. Just one word that this, and I'm praying this over everybody because I get prayer requests for this all the time. David said, I will both lay me down in peace and sleep. Peace first and sleep. For thy Lord only makest me to dwell in safety. Think about that. So I'm saying, Lord, I am thanking you in Jesus' name that tonight, tonight, when every one of you lay down, the peace of God is, is that your peace, your word says peace, will be on me. And because of it, I'll have sleep. For you make me to do, for thou only can make me dwell in safety. So I know I'm protected. That no evil can come nigh my dwelling place. The blood saturates this, uh, this place. And no devil's coming around. That safety, right there, that one verse is the word of God that's alive. It brings peace, it brings sleep, and it brings security and safety to you. You don't have to fear. That's how I've been praying. And that's that gets you, it's not the mind at all anymore. It's the spirit of God inside of you with your spirit uniting and coming back up as prayer, and that leads you to worship. It just does. And I've had, I keep worship, I just cut it off so that Rachel could get us up and going. So I pray now, God, that His the Lord's countenance is upon you. And that it uh, and me and all of all of our loved ones and it stays on us permanently, and that we have that divine glory and favor and care and approval and acceptance on us and Jesus, that we know it in the spirit, not the head, because the devil gets a message y'all up. You've got to know it in the spirit. It only comes by eating this word in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So well, I so this afternoon, you know, I can't sing. And, and but anyway, this song came to me, and the Lord said, "You tonight, you need to say repeat this song, because everybody needs to question themselves. Do I? I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus." My trials seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will be erased. So run the race till we see Christ. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. My trials will be so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will be erased. Oh, praise his holy name. We will run the race till we see Jesus. I wish I could sing that. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. I pray you're singing that in the spirit right now. Then following that, right after that, the song, the worship came out. What a beautiful name, the name of Jesus. What a beautiful name, the name above all names, Christ Jesus, my King. Can you say that tonight? Can you say, I surrender all? I pray, God, by the time we finish this up night, you're on your knees crying out, God, I surrender all. I want all of you. I can't live in this world anymore without having all of you working in me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yes, Joe. Thank you, Joe. So let's go to prayer. So, Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for tonight. Thank you for every life that will ever listen to this and all of their loved ones. Lord, I am after souls. I am after... Uh, kindling of fire. I'm after salvations. 
I'm after deliverances. I'm after healings. I'm after breakthroughs. I'm after particles. God, use this empty vessel any way you want to to touch your people tonight and people that don't even know you oh, and all these foreign countries that are following us, Lord God. I ask you, Father God, to send the Holy Spirit into every home now in great power, great revelation knowledge, revelation knowledge. Open their eyes to see and their ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to them tonight in Jesus' name and to me in Jesus' name. Father, I, I ask you to let the rivers of God pour forth out of our belly, that the rivers of living water are pouring out of us. Dwell among us, Lord. Be our King. Be our Lord. Be our Savior. Let our hearts be yielded to your heart. Let our heart be bound into your heart to know you, the heartbeat of you as our Savior and King and Lord. Lord, let us understand it. Let us feel it. Let us know it. Fill us with your compassion, the compassion that only you can give us. And then let us move in that love and compassion, the compassion of the heart that you have, Lord. Baptize us in that compassion, Lord, in love. Jesus, immerse us in your fragrance. Immerse us in the sin of your spirit. Immerse us in that that no one can lay their hand on, but it's you penetrating. Let every cell in our body Flow in your spirit. Let everything inside of us flow in your Holy Spirit. Oh, God, let your fire cause us to burn with the eternal weight of your glory. Let us be those ones carrying your glory, Lord. We love you, Lord. We ask you to open our hearts and minds so we can understand it even more, that we can even yield more to you, that we can understand where we're in trouble and need to let go so you can have your way with us. Break forth, Lord. Break in. Break in tonight, Lord. Break in as we surrender all to you. God calls people to cry, God, I surrender all, and Lord, I ask you to move in right now and start shattering those hard places, those broken places, those lost places, those painful places, those rejected places, those abandoned places, those hatred places, those um, unloved places, those adultery places, everywhere there's been heartache and heartbreak and grief and sorrow. Break through tonight, oh God, by your spirit, power of your Holy Spirit, the power of your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name, covered in the blood, everything, every prayer, every word coming and covered in the blood of Jesus with great anointing and power in Jesus' name. Cause us to drink deep of the foundation of our salvation, deep into the foundation of our salvation, and let the living waters pour into us and pour out of us to bring us cleansing and healing, oh God. Melt us in your love tonight, Lord Jesus. Melt us in your love, Lord Jesus. Oh God, thank you, Lord Jesus, for your countenance that's upon us and will stay upon us, and the glory of God will be seen through our lives and to bring glory back to you no one else back to you that the people don't see any of us they see you they hear you they're after you that we cause them to hunger and thirst after you that our very lives cause them to look to hunger and thirst after you cause us to run after you cause us to want to know your word cause us to be revived tonight oh god in jesus name lead us into paths of righteousness for your name's sake lord you said to lead us into paths of righteousness for your name's sake so that we are holding you up and esteeming you high and that our lives magnify you lord lead us into paths of righteousness for your name's sake and not for our name's sake, for your name's sake. Restore the joy of our salvation, Lord. Restore the joy of our salvation. Revive us, renew us, rekindle us. Cause us to want to know you. Cause us to realize every day is a gift from you, to be used for you, that you had a plan for that day before we were ever born. And that we, the days that we've messed up, God, and I cry this even today. Forgive me, take what time I have left and and multiply it so that I go past what you had planned for me. That when I meet you, I will not be ashamed. That I'll be not sorry. That I know that I accomplished what you put me here on earth to do. And I pray that for every one of my pre precious friends. Everyone that will ever join as a friend to Master's Touch Ministries. That God, that you're doing a work in their lives like you are in my life and my family's life. That you're doing a great work in us that changes our lives forever. And that we know the peace of God that passes all understanding. We know the, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. We know the love of the Father. And we know the fellowship of the Holy Ghost. 
I bind that into every one of us listening to this from now till Jesus comes. And even after that, Lord, if someone pulls it down out of iCloud and listens to it, that it brings them into the kingdom in, in Jesus' name. Let it cause us to eat true bread from heaven tonight, Lord, that changes our lives forever in Jesus' name. We want your presence more than anything. We want your presence. We want to live and walk in your presence, being aware of your presence and your love and your, and, and your life in our lives in Jesus' name. So now, Lord, I commit it all to you, and I thank you that you are hearing this prayer, and I bind it into all of our lives, all of our loved ones, till Jesus comes, all of us, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I thank you that by your stripes we are healed. So I send healing forth tonight by the anointing of the Spirit of God covered in the blood of Jesus Christ. I thank you that the peace of God that paces all understanding is filling lives tonight in Jesus' name. That we have power over all the power of Satan and nothing can by any means hurt us. I bind every devil that's afflicting anybody right now and I cast it out of you. Close all doors permanently. Wash you. Dedicate that part of you back to Jesus Christ permanently and forever. And no demons can ever come back and take that place in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And I thank you that you give your beloved sweet sleep, that the, that the, the sleep come into your, to the body of Christ and peace in Jesus' holy name, in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord God. Now, as I go on with this, Lord, let everything have an anointing on it that brings life. I want life, Lord Jesus, that everything is bringing life to anyone listening to this. That it's, it's theirs. It's not. It's for anybody. It's for anybody. You paid the price for all of us to know you in Jesus' holy name. Thank you, Jesus. So I give this prayer to you. I give this the rest of this meeting to you for your glory in Jesus' name. I want to I share this because this is so exciting, and all of you that have been praying a part of this. This is from a young man from India. He says, "No, from Pakistan." Um, and y'all have heard some from him because he went to a group. He got they got on fire. Evidently, it has it's it, from this is because of what they'll learn about the Holy Spirit here. And they he took a group and went to a place where it hadn't been any anybody t taking the gospel for sixteen years because they're killing, they're murdering Christians. And they went, and people were healed and delivered and everything. So the Lord is, and th now this young man, the Lord has told them to start school. So they've got all these children, beautiful children. And they're teaching them, but they've got the Bible. The Lord, He said, the Lord spoke to them and said, teach them Bible, teach them about Jesus. And they'll go back to their home and tell their parents about Jesus. And the, then they'll want to know him. So they've got this thing going on. But anyway, he wrote this today and sent it. And he said, praise the Lord, Sister Linda. God has done great work in MAR. That's his, his, his and his wife's ministry. And he's been in ministry, I think, 17 years. I don't, I don't know if he's a pastor or what, but he said, life through your YouTube sermons, sister, for the last 17 years. Uh, and God has done great work in MAR. Life through your YouTube sermons, sister, for the last, I don't know what that is. I'm telling you through the Holy Spirit that God is using you for his kingdom and you are blessing you more and more in Jesus' name. And what he's saying is that they're getting this in Pakistan and it's changing lives. And that's from S-A-J-I-D-B-H-A-T-T-I. -T -T and I'm so thankful that he took the time to let me know that they're being blessed in, in Pakistan from these meetings. And then the one that lady sent in that she was healed two years ago from um, G5 and um, sensitivity to cell phone towers, smart meters, 5G microwave frequencies, electron devices. She moved way up somewhere in the way up where there's nothing there and out where there's nothing. Everything's organic, everything. And the, she, she says two years ago when I prayed for her, the Lord took something off her brain and she's been healed. She was healed, and I put it out. But now she's asking for a lady named M-A-R. It has the same thing. And uh, she said, I'm going to send her your video, The Songs of Solomon, to listen to for my healing and claim it for herself. So that's a, listen, that's a powerful healing. Anybody that gets healed from something to do with, with that kind of thing is big. This is one that I think is going to help some of you. This is from a lady that follows us all the time. 
And she said, she and her husband watch with one phone and they get in bed and they watch it. They lay in bed and watch it with one phone because they live out. On May the 15th, starting at 30, at 30, you listed things that we should break off our family to be set free. I had been dealing with a strange pain in my brain. I woke up in the middle of the night Saturday and I sensed that I needed to go over the list which I had written down from your teaching. I then did communion and glory. The pain that had been in my brain for over a week was gone. Thank you for your faithfulness. So these things, these things are powerful. It's, we're not wasting time. God's using them for his. And then a uh, lady had all of her blood work that was really concerned. And we, the whole, we all prayed. She said, my blood work was perfect. My blood pressure was perfect. My heart, oxygen levels, everything was perfect. And he did a, a floxetine, 20 milligrams, and definitely thinks my weight loss is coming from anxiety. But he isn't worried. Because they've been through COVID, COVID. She's had COVID three times, this lady has. She had all, the, you know, she's had everything. But she said, she's had a lot going on in her body. But the Lord's healing her. She said, when I woke up this morning, I felt like a different person. I wanted to eat, and I have felt good all day. I know with all your prayers and her children and everyone else's that has been praying for me has brought back my healing through Christ Jesus. I love you, and I'm doing well. So we thank the Lord for the miracles and the ones that are willing to share what Jesus did from them because he'll keep right on touching them. This is the scripture the Lord gave me to read tonight, and then it's already five after nine, but I've got to read this because this, somebody needs to hear this, and, it, and I need to hear it. We all know it, but you need to hear it again. Um. This is from Matthew 6, it, and you can read before and after, but I'm just going to read the prayer. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask. After this manner, therefore, pray this way. This is Jesus talking. It's in red. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So he's praying that his kingdom, that we bind his kingdom here on earth. What are we bind on earth is bound in heaven. What are we loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And he goes on after this talking about you've got to forgive, forgive. He goes on and says that. And lead us not into temptation. You need to pray this over your children. This is a big one. This is the one the Lord gave me years ago. And lead us not into te temptation, but deliver us from evil. You can say, Lord, deliver us. It says this. And lead us not into te to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And then it goes on telling you about forgiving. You've got to forgive and all that. That's, you, need to, you need to start praying this. You pray the word from your heart and bind it into everybody you can think of. You forgive. You know, you got to forgive. He'll say that. Right after that, it goes into forgiveness again. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. God, I bind that into every one of us. Now, permanently, Lord God, deliver us from evil. Pray that over your children. Pray that over your grandchildren. Pray them over the unborn children coming into your bloodline. Don't just stop with you or you, uh, you know, just... Uh, I'm a forerunner. That's what I've been told. And I think, you know, when I think about the way I pray, maybe a little bit is like that. I don't know. So, Lord, we just love you. Thank you, Lord, for everybody so here sharing in this tonight. Thank you, oh, God, for the good things of the Lord, for your love, for your patience with us, that you never give up on us. You're, you're waiting on us. You're not, we're not waiting on you. You're waiting on us. We're coming. We're coming tonight with everything in this, Lord. Habakkuk 2. So tonight we want rivers. We've been talking about the rivers. that, that the, When it talks about the temple, we are the temple. And when it talks about the rivers of water coming out of our belly, and when, it, when Ezekiel was talking about the river coming out of the temple, it trickled it first. That's us. That's the Holy Spirit. The water represents the Holy Spirit. Trickles, comes out of us. And there were different levels. And that has to do with the different anointings on your life. 
as you grow and you and you let more of you go so more of him can come in you go you keep get going and going until you're fully mature till you're in the water totally in the water and that's when you're walking in this spirit but you can walk you walk in the spirit before that but there's a growth process for all of us and and levels and we want to go all the way and be in the river and out of us comes river living water so i'm asking the lord tonight to start giving everybody dreams and visions of all the things he has for each one of us and that we get moving on we need instruction from the word of god and because the holy spirit is one that changes us through the word so I'm asking the Holy Spirit to speak to each one of us tonight what he has for each one of us individually. He knows what he has for you and he knows what he has for you to do. Tim Rice, I just see you, honey. Thank you for watching. Thank God for the miracles in your life. In Jesus' name. He says, my sheep hear my voice. So you get in the word and you will hear the shepherd's voice. No one else's voice. You'll hear his voice. And remember the axe head fell in the water and the and so we're talking about the anointing tonight and the and the Holy Spirit in the river and how do we get where God wants us to go? And so when that axe head fell in the water, these were prophets. Um Elijah asked him where it fell, where did it fall? And he said in the water and they went. And so when he lost the axe head, all he had left was a stick with no power. It represents us and the anointing. And, it, and he was in the water. It was in the water. So it means he was moving in the war, in the spirit. But he lost it. A lot of people have been anointed and have lost it. And what I share with you is, 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 is he said to him, Elijah said, where did you lose it? And he said, so Elijah takes him over there, puts the stick, which represents you, back in the water. And the axe head floated, which is a supernatural. It's our lives. If you're in, if you've gotten there where you're in the water, not the trickle, you know, first it was trickle, then it was the ankles, then it was the knee, then it was the waist, the thigh, and then, and then they were swimming in the, it's all talking about really living and moving in the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. So if you are listening tonight and you feel like you were moving in the spirit and you have lost it, go back. Where, what did you do? What did you get involved in? What took your uh, heart away? And repent. It's always repent and come back and start floating. Get that axe head back and stay in the water. You'll get it in the water. That's where you left it. That's where you'll pick it up. And just repent. Your repentance is always plays a part in all of this. So go back. The place you lost it, regain it. And get that power back on your life so that when you're dealing with people, you're not beating them up, destroying them. You are bringing life to them, water of the Holy Spirit, life in the name of Jesus. Because if you've lost the anointing, you don't have anything to give. But you become hard. You become, you, it, it changes you once you've walked in the, listen, it's a serious thing. The higher you go with the Lord and moving into the power of the Holy Spirit, you don't want to ever move out of there because of the, you're dealing with the big demonic in the heavenlies you're you're up there and you just let open yourself up don't do it be determined to stay with the lord come hell or high water you do not walk away from the anointing on your life in jesus name that's a warning i've watched it you know when you've been serving the lord 50 something years and you've been through a lot of things your own self you learn a lot and you know how quickly things can get messed up and it's just, if you're going on with the Lord, be determined you're going to stay with him no matter what. Whatever it costs you, you're willing to, you're willing to pay the price. And it will cost you everything in, almost in the end. The Lord brings it back in glorious in other ways. But at the time, you don't even think that. Or even All you want to do is find his will through it all, through the desert, the wilderness. So that you're coming out on the other side greater in, in him not greater in yourself, but greater in the things of the Spirit and less of you. And and listen, this is one thing you mess you up quicker. Second Corinthians 6, Be ye not ye yoked with, uh, with unbelievers. Ye are the temple of the living God. I will be there. I will be in them. I will walk with them. I will be, I will be their God. Come out and I will receive you. Touch not the unclean, and you will be my son. 
and it goes on light and darkness can't mix the more light that comes into your life the greater responsibility on your life so you have to make up your mind that jesus christ is that he has you and are you are you know it's up to you everybody has to make their own decisions here i would not go any other way because in the end you've got to answer to him <clears throat> what did you do with what i gave you or what did you did you ask me to show you what i had planned for you for your future for your life i can you know when i was young nothing like that was ever taught i'm telling you tell your children to ask the Lord, even pray for them while they're growing up to, to get them into what they're supposed to be in life, where, you know, where everybody has different callings. You can be anything. Some people are housewives, which is a wonderful calling. Some people are taxi drivers. Some are um, doctors. Some are nurses. I have to say that. Some are uh, prayer warriors. They're just called to pray for people. You know, there's all, uh, some of to run nations, some of to run, and we all have different callings. Just ask God to get you where he made you, because that's where you'll flourish if you stay with him. Ecclesiastes 9.18, and I don't know why the Lord has, he's warning some people. Write on your heart, one sinner destroys much good. Write that on your heart, Ecclesiastes 9.18. And then this, I love this because this happened to me. Uh, Isaiah 38, 19. This is just talking about life and walking and finding your place in the body of Christ and where you belong and who do you need to be listening to. It says, the fathers to the children sh shall make known the truth. The fathers to the children. It, it, it has nothing to do with age. It's those that are fathers that have grown in the spirit to their in that mature age. And, they, and then they share the truth with the children. Make known the truth to the children. Elijah called Elisha, my father, my father. Had he, if Elisha hadn't connected with Elijah and stayed with him, he would have lost his, he would not have never gone, get, reached his destiny. God dis, destined him to be connected with uh, Elijah, even though Elijah told him three times to stay, not to go with him. He said, no, wherever you go, I'm going. God Almighty had a destiny for Elisha. And, oh, and you know all that happened to him. He saw him go up in the chair and everything. God has a destiny with your connection. And some of you have walked away from connections that God connected you to to get you where he wanted you to go. Your destiny was in that connection. And you walked away. If you know that, repent, go back, ask for forgiveness, and get back with that person under that authority or whatever. Get under it. Don't ever be under control and manipulation. That is not of the Lord, but go back where the connection was. You know in your heart, the Spirit of God will tell you. Second Kings 6, 9. And it talks about that axe head again and that dry stick. You had dried up. You were moving kind of in the Spirit. And, and all of a sudden, everything is stopping. You're drying up, dying. Go back. Ask the Lord to get you to the person that has your destiny tied up in it because he has people out here that he wants to connect you with that's going to get you even something they say, something they teach, something they, they're in will guide you into your destiny that the Lord has for you. So, and all the the end result is we all want to be soaked in the river of his spirit, every one of us. And when I'm talking about that, it's really important you get with who you're supposed to. Um, Ruth and Naomi is another example of the, of the destiny being fulfilled because they, Ruth could have left her, that was a daughter-in-law, like the other daughter-in-law, when she went back home, back to her people. Ruth would not leave her. She said, "Whoever you, whatever your God is will be my God. Wherever you go, I will go. And Ruth, because, because Naomi was the destiny for Ruth, and Ruth made that choice even after the other daughter-in-law turned and went back to her home. Ruth stayed with Naomi because her destiny was in that connection and married Boaz, which was, and because of that, both of them were blessed. And of course, 
read the story. God has people that can bring you to your destiny. And you and ask him to get you to that person. And if you already know him, get under it and learn everything you can from them. I did because the Lord had been doing all kinds of things in my life. I could not find anybody that could tell me. I, I mean, and it was all scriptural. But it was like, I mean, if I shared things with people that I knew then, they would have thought I had lost my mind. But I finally, after years of praying and trying to understand it all, and I found it all in the Bible. Everything he did was right in the Bible. It was supernatural. It was out of the natural. And I couldn't get anybody to even, even begin to understand any of it. Y years of seeking. I would wrote letters to pastors, you know, asking things. And no, no, didn't get a response. And so years later, I read in the newspaper about a young man that God was really using. And it told about some of the things that happened to him. And inside, I knew God was speaking to me. I had to find him some kind of way to go on with how the Lord was leading me and guiding me at that time. And all kind of things, miracles were happening and everything by this time. And it was Benny Hinn. And you can say what you want to about that man, but you need to listen to his teachings. You need to listen to him. He is an anointed man. Yes, he's made mistakes and he is publicly repented and everything. But let me tell you something. There's anointing on that man, and he has he can teach you things that you don't hear, and it's all scriptural. And right now he's got a Hebrew scholar teaching him the whole Bible in Hebrew because from Genesis to Revelation, it's all Jesus Christ, and they showing him every bit of it is Jesus Christ. It's an amazing thing. Well, God, it was in the paper. I lived somewhere, and this was in the paper, and I thought, I've got to find this man. So I asked people around, they'd never heard of him. It, he was young then, because see, this was like maybe 30 years ago. Um, I was baptized in the Spirit when I was 27 years old. Uh, uh, and I was probably I was probably around 40 maybe when I read this. Well, no, it wouldn't have been that long because too much was happening to me. Well, anyway, it took me several years to find him. I called the radio stations. I called the TV station. I even called and requested him. I came down here from Ohio or wherever we lived at the time, and I was sitting in my daughter's home, and he came on the TV. I sat there while there were people there to visit with me and get prayer and all. I was, I was glued to that TV. Everything he said fed, fed my spirit. My, what's happening to me today is tied up a lot with that young man that's in love with the Lord and has paid a huge price. He came up family. There were no believers. He, they thought he was crazy. They took him to a psychiatrist and mad in him. Angry. I can't even tell you what all he went through as a young man because he accepted Jesus Christ as his Savior. And then he went, started going to all, getting on bus and going to all of Catherine Kuhlman's meetings. He went anywhere he could to find the back of the Lord because he came. He's from the, the Jew, He's from the Jewish background. He's from Right over there around, right around Jerusalem in there. His family is. He's got wealth of knowledge in him. That's truth that he's lived his life by in Jesus' name. And he does, and you know, the Lord gives gifts to people and he does have the gift of healing. You can, and I've been healed twice in his conferences, sitting up way back on the little back row one time and somewhere else another time. Just sitting there. Jesus moved around and healed. I learned a long time ago, whatever you need, you need to find the person that has it. And you get there and you stay there and you learn and you take in everything you can. He had experience and walked in it out in the public for many years where I was, everything happening to me. And I'm sharing individually with everybody. But I needed to connect with someone that knew what was going on in my life. And, it would, and I call him a spiritual father. Because even though God had done everything up to then in my life, I was already moving into the miraculous and sin and all that. But he had truth in the word that really, really has brought life to me and healing to me and understanding more than anything. That's what I needed because we were in Southern Baptist Church and uh, the gifts and all that were, you know, were not. And being baptized in the Spirit was not spoken of. Every believer 
Jesus said, you tarry in Jerusalem. Don't go anywhere. You tarry there until you endued with power from on high. And then he gives all the gifts over. Go to 1 Corinthians 11, 12, and 13. And always have love at the top, everything you do, in Jesus' name. So let's go on. Psalms 45, 7. God anoints with, the, uh, with oil, with the oil of gladness. I'm praying that on, binding that into all of us tonight. God is calling all of us in deep in our hearts with a, from a soul of repentance. And taking the priceless gift of the cross that he paid for all of our sins at the cross. And I tell you to go to the cross when you can't go anywhere else. And you lay at the foot of the cross and let his blood and his grace and his mercy cleanse you. It's the blood that delivers you. It's the blood of Jesus Christ that delivers you. It's the blood that we're in a blood covenant. Every promise comes to us because of his blood covenant with us. It cost him his life. If, you, if you're around people that aren't anointed and you the anointing's on you, it, it, the scripture said dead flies cause the anointing to stink. Don't be around dead flies. Believers are called sheep. We are sheep. And we come to the light. And we want to carry the light into this dark world. So I'm, I'm saying go back to the Holy Spirit and ask him to show you where, who who can connect you to your destiny? That can guide you. That gone for in front of you. That can guide you. In the scripture, be careful. You do not want to be deceived. But just ask God to get you there. You can't stay where it's dead, or you won't make it. You've got to have life flowing into you and through you. In Jesus' name. I had someone send me another email this week. Why? What do you do when every time you go to church, you're in worse shape and feel worse after you come out? I get that question thrown me all the time. I say, seek the church. Seek believers. You know, you can you find a father, mother, grandfather, grandmother. Find a, a, someone that's matured in the spirit that can guide you and lead you. and keep. It's got to be life worth the word the prayer, and worship. We want green pastures. We want to be green olives. We've got to be underneath the right leadership in the right location at the right time so we can be fed fresh things right from manna from heaven so we can keep moving on and be lifted up in him, not ourselves. We're dying. The whole thing about the the olive is dying to self. And now we're going to get into that. And I want to start with this because a lot of you, this is where you are. It's where I am. It's, a, it's, Luke, it's in Luke about the Good Samaritan. And I told you, the, the Lord showed me that years ago and told me that was my calling to go to the ditches. And whatever else. To get to rescue people that were hey, dead by the, by the devil. And the priest and Levi passed by on the other side. Their calling was in the tabernacle in the temple. Well, this good Samaritan came by, but he came by with the oil and the wine, which represents the anointing of the Holy Spirit and the blessings of God Almighty. He had it. And because he had it with compassion, he stops and tends to this man that says, he's all, hey, dead, because the enemy had stripped him, which represents Satan. We've got many people watching me that the devil has stripped you to nothing. And God wants to send the Good Samaritan, those that have the oil and the wine out. He doesn't care about your title. The Lord doesn't care about your title. He cares about what's in your heart. Get the oil and the wine and go after the broken. Go after those that can't make it. Go after those that can't find their way. Go get them and rescue them. You have it. If you have Jesus in you. I, Lord, tonight I bind the oil and the wine that is bubbling up and bubbling out of us with the compassion covering it all that takes us to the Lord, takes us to places that no one else wants to go. God, make us those ones that go where no one else wants to go or spend the time trying to help them 
figure out their life and what went wrong and how to, and the deliverance it takes sometimes a long time, but you don't ever give up. Don't ever give up on anybody. God never gives up on anybody. This, this anointing I'm talking about, this oil and wine, this anointing that we have, it will cost you something to be full of life of the Spirit of God. And I'm asking all of you, now, are, you need to ask you, are you willing to pay the price? This is serious. Are you willing to pray, pay the price to go to the cross that brings death? That you take up your cross like Jesus did, which meant death. I'm asking you, you need to answer that because the Holy Spirit is searching the world now for people that are ready to yield it all in this dark world. You don't want a dry anointing afflicts people instead of helping them. You've got to have life moving through you. So here's where we're going with the olive tree. And it all is it, the spirit. It's the spirit in the rod of the cross that beats that old nature out of us and brings salvation to us. It starts at the cross. It's like the olive tree. They have to, if the olive falls off early, it's cursed. They will not use it. And, and, that, and I've got the scripture here. It said Deuteronomy somewhere. If an olive was falling on the ground, if it fell early, it was cursed. It was not to be used. So the, the olives that were used were beaten first on the tree. They were beaten so that they were soft and pliable. That's the work of the cross in, our, in us. And I tell you, and, and that beating gets the sin out of us. It cleanses. He comes in and bursts himself in us. It he bursts, but he when he does all of that goes and he comes in, and it was a, and for me it was a very a traumatic, beautiful, incredible experience. The cross in my life, I was so dead, and he took the the power of the cross, and he laid the cross on my spirit. He laid it on my spirit and took my iniquities, took my sins, took my general things handed down, things that happened to me in life, things that I had no, that had scarred me and marred me, and instantly removed them. Instantly, instantly that part of me was made whole in him, and his spirit of God dwelt in me. And everything in my life became, everything changed. That's the work of the cross to, to go into the spirit that's dead, dead, isolated, separated, and connected back to you. Cleanse it and connect it, fill it with you and connect it back to you. That's the first thing to do with those olives before they press them for the oil. The second step, and that's Deuteronomy 24, 20, about the beaten. Okay, the Isaiah 17, 6, and if these are not quite right, look them up. You can, you can research anything on your phone. The second step, they shake them. Once they beat them, which represents a cross and us being born again, they shake. And and they God always shakes us when we're ripe. See, now they're ready, they're ripe because they've been beaten and they're soft and they're pliable. When the cross comes into you, truly born again and all that, you are soft and pliable. You want to know this person that just paid his life and came and rescued you when you didn't have, you could give him nothing. The second step is Isaiah 76. It's the shaking. And let me tell you something. God Almighty will shake you, turn you upside down, and turn you back upright to get the stuff out of you that he's going to get out of you if you want to go all the way to the river where you are in the river. It's all about how much are you willing to let go to have more of the anointing in your life. And this. And one way, and he he'll do this in different ways. You'll become so uncomfortable, you know you need deliverance, or you know something's wrong and something's got to come out because it's the opposite of your salvation. You he will keep working on you. A lot of times, the things in us, and actually all of this, all of the um, shaking part has to do not all of most of it has to do with our soul, our emotions, our, our mind, will, and emotions. It's where we've been bruised in life. It's where we have familiar spirits from 
the people that raised us are generational. It's from generational bondages and curses. It's from uh, where you love, where you where you tenderly care for, where you taught the word. Where it's all all of that that's not lining up with the word of God. He's going to shake it out of you. He's going to get it out of. He will the force behind the Holy Spirit to get you where the God's taking you for your destiny. He will not let up, and sometimes you think you will not make it. You hang on to the cross. Hang on to the cross. They used to hang on to the altar of the cross, the horn of the cross, horn of the altar, because they did. The enemy could not hurt them any longer. They would get there. They knew they were desperate to survive. Desperate, God will make sure someone comes along that can help you get delivered. Get that out of you. And the blood of Jesus Christ delivers us from all the blood delivered. It is the blood that gives us power over all the power of Satan. You have it. You have you got to use it with your mouth. Jesus always spoke. He always spoke. Satan can't hear you thinking. You got to speak it. Speak it. Speak it in your home about the blood delivering you. He'll stay in this part right here of the shaken. It can take a long time or a short time. With me, it's been, it was a long And Actually, he I don't think, I believe he's always changing everything in us into his image until we go out of here. As you read the word, you realize more and more what else needs to be changed so it lines up with his heart. It's always about his heart, being like his heart. It's like I, I, I wrote this down because the thought came to me. It's like, where, and I mentioned this last week, where Jesus, where those men, Pharisees, came and wanted to see Jesus. And they, and they told Andrew, and Andrew went and got the other one. There were two, and they went and told Jesus that these people wanted to see him. And his answer was amazing. He said, if you want to see me, uh, only like a grain of wheat that falls in the ground and dies and, and comes forth. That's, he said, that's the only way you'll see me. It's when I come forth, I'll bear much fruit. It's the same thing to us. Well, what in this shaking, what he's doing, that seed has an outer crust on it. He's crushing through it. He's breaking through it. He's breaking through it and getting to the, what's underneath that hard place and getting it out of you. This hidden, you don't even realize yourself what's in you that needs to come out. God will break it and break it and he'll he'll keep on and keep on and working on it till you realize something needs to go. And you'll get to the point, if you've dedicated and yielded everything you have to the Lord, that you will yield and you will keep yielding and you'll keep yielding no matter how long it takes until you're free. And you they, until you're living in, in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's where it's taken all of us. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And then the third part, and it's, you know, it's the word, the, uh, the third part, let's see, I wanted to, where did I put that third part? I've got to find it, y'all. Sometimes, well, the third part is the word. The rock is, is the word. That's the rock that pressed out the oil. And that word will press will, will press out, out the oil out of you too. That's what it does. It changes you. It breaks. It breaks through those things. And and so I there, I've got a third one somewhere when I found Oh, it's Micah 615. It crushed. The third part is being crushed. And the, it's the word of God that crushes you, and it really, really does. That's what triggers something in you. You need to change this. You need to walk away from that. You need to forgive. You need to go, you know, whatever. And what it does, in the, in the scripture for, for like this rock, Deuteronomy 13, 30 to 13, all comes out of the flinty rock. And... Olives crushed oil comes out of the, oh yeah, it comes out of the bottom. The olive oil that, that after all this, after these three cycles, you start, uh, oil starts coming out. 
and and I was going to tell you about the word. I've got it all written down somewhere. The word is called a hammer, and I've written it down. Um, it, he's making our will to come under the control of the Holy Spirit, and our will is submitted to His will. And this is what the word does, and it's called a hammer. And one and what actually one translation. Um, I don't guess it's on this page. I it's called um, it's called the fire of the word, and it's called the hammer, the mighty hammer of the word that breaks the rocks. And that word it, it's a, it's against our wheels, our wheels that have to be broken. It's our wheels. It's the it's the way we've learned to live a certain way. And he's taken us another way. It's a, the word crushes that wheel, which is the flesh. The word of God transforms the will into the will of God. But you've got to get it in you and let him do that work. Now, it's already 20 to 10. Let's see. And after he does those three things, the anointing flows, and he keeps taking you through these cycles. And, and, and until he gets all the oil in you from the Holy Spirit till so you're swimming in that river. It's the flesh yielding to the Holy Spirit. The whole thing is getting everything in us yielded to the work of the Holy Spirit, which always lines up with the Word of God. And it's, in, and it's Jesus Christ. Exodus 30, 32. The oil must, must not touch the flesh. This is why the flesh has to go. The, flesh, the anointing of the Holy Spirit will not touch our flesh. The more we let this flesh part go, the more of the anointing will come in and fill us. And it's true. It's, I, I'm, ex, I'm experiencing it more and more. It's a, it's a process. Exodus 30, they all must not touch the flesh. That's why God allows the beating, the shaking, and the crushing. Because the flesh has to go so the oil can come in. And it becomes holy unto you. The more the flesh goes, the greater the anointing. And I'm asking the Lord to show me next what needs to go. I'm, I'm in it. I'm in it all. I'm in it till I go out of here. Shelby and I, we, we just prayed that. God, get us. Use us. Open us up. Exodus 30, 32 says this. I just read that. Upon man flesh, upon man. Oh, no. Oh, it says the flesh, it must. It's holy unto you. It cannot touch the flesh, but it's touch, the anointing is touching you. So it's holy, that oil now, that holy oil of the anointing is holy unto you. And then, then, then you have an essence and fragrance of Jesus from it. But it comes through dying and letting the Lord, the word of God, like it, it calls our flesh like a rock. And that word is a hammer on that rock that crushes it. And the shaking also will cause the, the outer crust has to come off so the shaking can get out what it's trying to get out. They work together, but it's all to get the anointing oil, the anointing on on you and in you more and more so that you have more and more of Jesus. We've got to have it. We, the church is, we're in a mess. Some people are doing really good. Some are dead. Some don't even know they're dead. Some are trying, but we need the anointing. It's, it, he said, tarry ye in Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. He had already breathed on them early in John, and they received the Holy Spirit then. This was, he said, now, now you go and you tarry there. You tarry there. And, and so each one of these, like when he's dealing with you, you are tarrying there. And more, of course, the baptism, that's talking about the baptism of the Spirit. But each time then the Spirit's trying to work more in you, you're tarrying somewhere while he is enduing you with power over that thing. So it's gone. It's like death. That your uh, your desires and all you're dead to them, and there the Holy Spirit comes in. 
Here it is. NIV. Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock. That's that wheel. And one of the ver translations says, it, it, the word of God is it burns burns like fire. And I remember praying for one of my son-in-laws or somebody. Every time I prayed for them, their stomach was on fire, so much fire. It, it was so painful, they could hardly stand it. They doubled over with it. The fire of God is on that young man. Every time we pray, he, I mean, it was something. He went out in the spirit, everything else. So we want the fire to do whatever it needs to do. And we want that hammer. It's the, ha it's the word. It's the power of the word of God. To, it's alive. The word of God is alive. And it is a hammer against anything in your life or my life that needs to be broken and broken and shattered. Shattered so that he can fill us with him. The sweetness, the love, the kindness. And with the gifts of the spirit that everybody needs, the healing ministry, the revelation, all of that miracles the gift of faith the gift of healing these are gifts that are to the body of christ tongues interpretation zone discerning of spirits prophecy i think there's a lot of other things too gift of teaching you know excellent gifts it's all kind of things but there's specific gifts there that are for each one of us and we should be flowing in them some of them some people like Apostles is flowing all of them. I think that I believe that that's right. I'm not. I'm not a. Listen, I tell everybody you check it out for yourself because I am not a Bible scholar. I'm just sharing what's happened to me, and through this walk with the Lord, and and it's been and it's some places have been very very painful, but I had to make a choice. I'm going to walk according to the Word, no matter how painful it was, and God has always brought us through to the other side and if, when we get there we're always more yielded to him more broken so that we know we have nothing without him we have no, i have nothing i have nothing to give you except what he's get what he's done in my life and other people since i pray for thousands of people but that's what he wants to do with you just remember this upon upon man's flesh the anointing cannot come the more your flesh you, you let be crucified and the life you live now, you live by the faith of the Son of God who loved you and gave himself for you. The more you let that happen, the more of the anointing is coming in your life. You'll have revelation knowledge. You'll know things. You just know things. Most Christians, I don't know about now because the times have changed, uh, are wanting his attributes but aren't willing to pay the price. It's all ours. It belongs to the, we're the body. We're his bride. It's all ours for the taking. No, I wrote this down here from my own heart, but this was several years ago. No Christian that I know has ever had the gush, the gush of that Holy Spirit without beaten by the cross. The cross does an incredible work in us. And been shaken by the hand of God and crushed by the rock of his word. I can say that because I've experienced that and I'm still experiencing it. And I, you know, and I, I you know, with where we are, we're, there's other cycles in our life. But Shelby and I are going to live and be on our feet to the day whenever God's ready to take us home, then we'll go. This is a really, I wrote this down because it meant something to me and it still does. In 2 Corinthians, he says, I want your life to be written not in ink, but by the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want your, I want your life to be written not in ink, like who you are, but by the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray that on every one of us. And I'm going to stop right here so we can, I've got a lot more, but I will, we'll just go on with this. Look, I've got some more pages. You just don't want to fall off early. You want him to do that complete work in you. That the ones that the others that fall off early, it means Christians that aren't willing. They 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 
they're an olive, but they they're oh they fall it off and they're not they don't want to go on. That's that's and those secret sins in our heart are one of the biggest things that the rock, the crushing of the word of God works on in us. There's secret sins that you think no one knows, and you can cover them for a while, but God Almighty sees them, and He and He wants a relationship with you, and He wants communion with you, and it will affect it'll affect it all. So get go, go and let your affections be for affections of things above and not here on this earth. He's always looking at our heart. So I'm going to stop right here. Uh, the one thing I will say this, I, I, I just kind of jotted this down. A lot of people will be listening to this and watching this and I, that are incarcerated, not in prison, not physical, but in prison, and are entombed in pain and addictions and infirmities and dead works and religion and sin and bondage and griefs and heartaches and bondages of all kind and God wants to deliver you God wants to deliver you set your affections on things above and not on things of this earth and let God start cleaning you out delivering you and it all starts at the cross in repentance repent every time he shows you something in you that he wants to change repent he never turns his back on a broken heart or someone that sees they're wrong and they want to be right. Thank you, Randy. Thank you, Randy. Randy's an attorney. We thank you, Randy. Uh, now, now I'm gonna. We're gonna pray again. I thank you, Lord, for your word. I thank you for your truth, and that anything that was not of you just erases, so people don't can't even remember it. And that that God Almighty touches lives tonight, that this is serious business. I'm not, I don't fool around. And I, y'all know that if it's not results, I go on somewhere else where there's results because wherever Jesus is, there's results. So you let him do his work on you. Let him yield up and ask him to show you what needs to go next in your life. Ask him. He's your shepherd. He's the, he's the chief shepherd. We're sheep and he's just waiting. Yes, Regina, we're praying for you, honey. I will go back and look at all the prayer requests, and I will be praying for you within the next day or two. And I will also, uh, if they're if they need to be, they'll be put up on the prayer list. Send out on our prayer prayer um, chain. We have some powerful prayer warriors, and everybody watching this needs to be praying for these prayer requests. That that God's calling you. You wouldn't be on here if you weren't getting fed or you're being used to pray for people. God wants to use you, and it becomes a blessing to you. I just thank God for every one of my friends. I thank him for everyone that watches this. And he told me not to look at numbers anymore. That uh, And it really doesn't matter because the fact that two or three people are watching me continuously, I know I'm doing what the Lord wants me to do I, I, because I, I am nothing. I know that. So I'm open to do whatever. I'm, this is his will for me. And I pray it blesses your life and changes your life. Uh, if I could, if I could get inside of you, or you could get inside me and know all the changes He's brought in my life through the years, and you can come from. It doesn't matter if you if you've lived on the streets. It doesn't matter if you lived in an orphanage. It doesn't matter if you've been adopted. It doesn't matter if you've never been loved and, uh, and been kicked out and disowned. Or if you know your daddy, you don't know your daddy. God has a destiny for you, but you've got to grab a hold and go after it with him. Not by yourself, with him leading you. He's a good shepherd, and he'll take you through many valleys. There will be valleys. You'll go through dark valleys, but he knows how to get you through them no matter how dark they are or how dangerous they are to the other side where you see the sunlight again and be blessed. He loves you, and he sees your pain. He sees that maybe you weren't blessed like other people. Maybe you didn't have the love like other people. Or maybe you've been abandoned or, or the person you love committed adultery on you. And the, you, actually, he told me to share this earlier. I can't, it's hard for me to teach because he come, butts in and tells me. I have to obey him and thank you, Lord, for reminding me of this. Some of you are watching this tonight that have broken hearts from uh, 
marriages that didn't work out. You may still be together. You may not still be together. You may both have gone on with, you know, other relationships, uh, married to other people. And you can't get your broken heart healed. The Lord said to tell you this, that the broken heart is there, but on top of that broken heart is grief that needs to go, sadness that needs to go, unforgiveness that needs to go, anger that needs to go, a resentment that needs to go, and I don't know what else needs to go. I, when all that stuff is dealt with, that the broken heart will be gone. But the sadness, the grief, the depression, all those things, that incident in your life opened the door for layer after layer after layer after layer to come into that one part of your emotion. So the Lord wants to start delivering you tonight of grief. It's actually a spirit. And yes, it was real. But God, and that's what hit you with it. But that wasn't God's plan for you. The enemy, you have to understand, it's not people. It's the enemy using people to destroy you. No matter, it, I, it, even in the marriage covenant, it's the enemy that gets in and he knows how to do it. He looks for weak places. Or he just knows. Now they do witchcraft to get you. You know, I mean, they really, and it literally works because I've prayed for a lot of people gotten free from those curses. And it destroyed you. The Lord wants to heal that broken heart. But the broken heart is not one thing. It's, it's everything that came in to those emotions at the time. Fear. Abandonment. Um, being lied to. I mean, having trouble to, and, and even not trusting. You, it, the Lord needs to get all of that out so that that whole pocket is cleaned and he can then restore your soul. Now, he gave me that twice, and I thank God he reminded me because there's people that need to hear this. It could be some other thing. For the, that is uh, an adulterous relationship. Or it can be even um, that your husband had emotional affairs or your wife had emotional affairs. Either one can do that to the, to the mate. So the Lord wants to heal you so you don't go on with that. And so if you're still with your mate, you can have a, a, a wonderful marriage. And the Lord restores it. And there's forgiveness and healing. But you've got to get your broken heart healed. Or you'll always um, come back with uh, sharp answers or something that has resentment in it. And that's a big one in, in, that whole, in that whole. It's like a nest. And I'm praying right now God starts delivering you one at a time. Call them out and start saying the blood of Jesus and command them to come out of you. And just keep saying the blood of Jesus. You can feel, you'll feel... I always felt stuff like pressure leave or a little bit of headache or uh, sometimes I was praying with somebody this week and I got really, really sick in my stomach and almost threw up. I mean, I, it took my breath um, over over this person I was praying with. I didn't mention that. I, I didn't mention that one, but um, the Lord's good and he loves us. So Lord Jesus, I just thank you for loving us. I thank you for everyone that's on here. I thank for everyone that will watch this in the years to come that you bless them, that the God's favor is on every life, that it's not overwhelming, that you are a gentle Savior, and you take us a step at a time, and you don't overwhelm us. And each time we let something go, we feel freer and freer, and freer in you, and freer to love, and freer to have compassion, and just free, that we know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Lord God, I bind that into every one of us that we start experiencing that. Totally. All three functions of Jesus in our lives, Lord. Thank you for that. Now, Lord, I lift, I lift this up. Lift us all up. Those that need breakthroughs, I command breakthroughs to come in the mighty name of Jesus. Where two of us agree is touching anything, it is done so right now in the name of Jesus. I command breakthroughs tonight. Breakthroughs. I take the sword of the Spirit and I cut the thing that's holding it captive. We bind up the stronghold behind it and we break it. We render them helpless and powerless and we release the breakthroughs. Those of you that are trying to, uh, real estate people and people that are trying to sell things, we command them to sell. We bind the devil off them. We bind lying, deceiving. Any devil that come to rob, steal, and kill is bound. Uh, any um, discrepancies are, are coming uncovered. 
and the Lord God Almighty will see to it that you find a place to live that you can afford. And those that are selling things that they are selling in Jesus' name. They're selling in Jesus' name. Nothing can stop them. We ask for the, the angels that come to serve us. You know, that that's their job is to serve. So we ask them to serve, to get busy and work, to help that to go through in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And we cover every every transaction with the blood of Jesus. That there be no hindrances and no hangups and nothing stopping it in Jesus' name. Wisdom in every situation. Godly wisdom. For those that need to be healed. We're asking God Almighty to send the word right now in Jesus' name. That by it is written by your stripes. We are healed, every one of us. So we command our bodies to be healed. Uh, body, soul, and spirit to be healed in Jesus' name. We um, We thank you, Lord God that uh, you stretch your hands and you heal, that you heal all those that come to you, that uh, you bound the spirits of infirmity and we break all spirits of infirmity out of everybody's sick right now and we command them to come out. We command them to come out in Jesus' name through the power of the blood. In the Through the power of the blood. It is written by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. We command the devil to turn loose and let go and, and those with cancer that are die, think they're dying with cancer, we, come, we bind death off of you we bind the devils of death and we release resurrection life into you right now that the lord heals you and delivers you that he causes health to come to you healing have lord i ask you for miraculous healings for those children that we've been praying for that need those miracles for the ones that are sick like regina said she's in hospice for two weeks god i ask you to go right there and go into her room jesus Lord Jesus, go into her room, let her see you, and heal her. I just We just thank you for doing the miraculous. You are God that hears us. I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you for Regina and how much we love her, Lord, and her life, and how she praises you and loves you. We just ask you to bless her and give her a long life. And, she, and anybody else watching this that needs healing from cancer, we bind up that spirit of cancer that, that just eats you up. And the cannibalism spirit is what the Lord called that one. And I assume that's probably what all of them are. So we bind up the kingdom, the strong man of cannibalism on all of us. We bind that devil to the pits. We say it cannot touch us. We plead the blood. We wash every cell of our bodies, lives in the blood of Jesus. And we command healing to flow into everybody that needs healing right now in Jesus' name. Those with sinus infections, those that are having throat problems because of the dry coughs, the infections, COVID, plagues, we bind and break in the name of, we thank you, Jesus, that it is written by your stripes, we are healed. And we bind the stripes and we plead the blood and we command everything to loose us and let us go in Jesus' name, in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, we bind resurrection life into all of us. We bind every form of death out of every life ever watches this and all of our loved ones. We bind every form of death. Death to finances, death to health, death to vision, death to whatever, heart, whatever. We bind and break the powers of the spirit of death. Jesus Christ is resurrection life. He overcame death. He overcame death for us. And we, so we break every form of death off of all of us. Everything to do with us and our children and our mates and our loved ones all the way till Jesus comes. We break death off of us and we bind into us resurrection life of Jesus Christ. Resurrection life of Jesus Christ, I bind into everybody, me, everybody, everybody that ever, our families, our loved ones. Resurrection life being poured into all of us tonight in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Crippling arthritis is leaving someone's body right now in Jesus' name. We thank you, God. Uh, afterwards, we bind all these things to the pits. They can never come back. We dedicate you back to total healing. In Jesus' name. Frustration is leaving someone. Something about a blueprint. God's taking care of something about a blueprint. The Lord's taking care of it. Shingles. A palinodal cyst that's being healed. Premature death is being destroyed. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Something about a fetal 
a fetal heartbeat or something's not right. The Lord's healing that heartbeat right now. We bind that birth defect out of that baby, unborn baby. We command that baby to be perfectly healthy in Jesus' name. Fallopian tubes are being healed. Fasciitis, uh, something back here on the heels. The Lord's healing those heels in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Bronchitis is being healed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Some people's finances are being healed. In the spite of all of it, God's healing some finances. Thank you, Lord. Fish shoes are being healed. A cross eye is being straightened. A cross eye is being straightened right now in Jesus' name. Cataracts are falling off of eyes. The heart, the heart, the artery to the heart, something about the arteries to the heart are being healed. Circulation in the legs are being healed. Circulation in your legs are being healed. And I'm including the feet too because I, he didn't say that, but the whole, all the way down, totally healed in Jesus' name. Someone's dealing with mercury and the Lord's helping you with that. Something about mercury. The Lord's, it's like a shift in mercury. I don't understand that. That's the word he said, shift in mercury. Thank you, Lord, that you're healing and taking care of that problem in Jesus' name. I may not even understand what that's all about, but whoever that's for understands it. Oh, Lord, liver. Someone's liver's being healed. The trachea's being healed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for these healings. Holy Spirit, thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you for the healing stripes of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your blood that cleanses us. Thank you for the Holy Spirit's power here, for the miraculous. Something's coming unhinged, like unhinged, and the Lord's fixing it, whatever it is. It might be a person feeling like they're coming unhinged. The Lord is delivering and healing, whatever that is, in Jesus' name. Praise you, Jesus. Sinuses are being healed. Tuberculosis is being healed. And some lungs are being healed. Intestines are being healed. Intestines. The Lord, thank you for confirming all this with signs and miracles following. Someone that's a lesbian, the Lord's delivering you from being a lesbian. Uh, he's doing a, like a whole mental, emotional, he's transforming you. That's leaving you. And I ask the Lord, let it be a very easy transition for you coming. As you, uh, you know who you are. The Lord's doing it, not, not me. He just wants you to know who's doing it, who's working with you and talking to you. And helping you to make the make this decision. It's it's the Lord Jesus. Lipids, your lipids, someone's lipids are being healed and put in order. Hemoglobin's being uh, um, increased. Your hemoglobin's being increased. It's uh, your hemoglobin's too low, and the Lord's increasing it. It's called, actually, you have something called iron deficiency, and the Lord is healing that part of your body that makes iron. And I, he's not calling this out, but I know two people with this that have excess iron. I just got to where there was iron deficiency uh, to heal them of too much iron, heal that part of the uh, endocrine in the cellular level and the genetics so that it all stabilizes and is healed in Jesus' name. 
the roof of somebody's mouth is being healed, ulcerated, ulcerated colitis is being healed, jaundice is being healed. Lord God, thank you, Jesus. We send this all over the world, these healings to go all over the world in Jesus' name. For your glory, Lord, that you get all the praise. Thank you, Lord, for the, all the ones that have been willing to testify. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we send this all around the world to everyone ever listening, that they receive the benefits of what you're doing in Jesus' name. Uh, breast cancer is being healed. Breast cancer. Some funguses are being healed. Phlebitis. Thank you, Jesus. What? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Someone's having contractures where things are drawing up. I don't know if you had a brain. The Lord's healing the contractures. Thank you, Lord. Miraculous. This is be a miraculous healing. It will be because he just gave it to me. Thank you, Lord. For contractures are being healed so that the legs and arms and everything are, are flexible and just normal. And Lord, I speak to our spines. Uh, a lot of people have spine problems. And uh, I'm asking you to heal spines tonight. I'm asking you from the base of the, our skull all the way down to the end of our tailbone and the hips, all the nerves, the ligaments, the tendons, the discs, the vertebrae, uh, all of it, that you heal us that you heal anybody that has problems, Lord, with their back and spine, that you straighten them up, that you cause the, the things to pop, move around, move, replay, just whatever to get them straight and healed in Jesus' name. The nerves, the to everything flows together. The sciatica, the um, hip joints, that all the joints, Actually, for everybody's joints all over their body to be healed and be stabilized and stay healed all the days of your life. And Lord, rheumatoid arthritis, you gave me right up. I'm thanking you people with the rheumatoid arthritis that's leaving your body. And if it's a if it's an emotion that's caused it or something way back that's caused that, I ask you to get it out of them. Just show them and get it out of them and heal them. Like a trauma. Trauma can cause things in your body in the in the mechanism to shift traumas real I know people that have almost died that sometimes some of it never really comes back to life right and you know so traumas can cause things so we ask any kind of trauma to anybody body that's watching right now that's caused things to shift around and out of we command everything to come in alignment to be healed be totally restored and renewed Sometimes it's just renewal, the Bible says, renewed everything in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, I give this all to you. I bind it into everybody. I'm going to blow the spirit of your breath on it, not mine, because of the word. Be healed in Jesus' name and delivered. Be healed in Jesus' name and delivered. Be healed in Jesus' name and delivered. In the name of Jesus, through the power of the Holy Ghost. Lord, let the wind blow over everybody. Blow, blow, blow. I send it from here, this anointing, to every home, every life watching, every child under every one of these parents. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let your healing flow. Let your deliverance flow. Let your breakthroughs flow. Let there be miraculous miracles this week, Lord. This week, let there be miraculous miracles. Right now, starting right now in people's lives i thank you for this opportunity to share it lord what you've shared with me through the years through all the brokenness all the uh pain of childhood and all of that that your god is faithful 
that you are a God that loves us right where we hurt the worst. You are so involved with your love and compassion and your healing presence. Let everyone feel that love, Lord. Let everyone hurt and feel that compassion. Break all condemnation and guilt. Wash it out right now, Lord, with your blood. Cleanse it all. Condemnation and guilt has to leave so you can feel his presence. Holy Spirit, just start settling down. Settling down. Let your peace, like a river, just flow into lives now. And let this peace and let sweet sleep sleep come to them permanently that they sleep at night whenever or whenever they sleep that it's sweet sleep and restful sleep just start settling down on us lord with the miraculous move of your spirit deliverance from things that have been so painful things that have messed us up Help us to re, it just refocus us in the way you want us to go and a place uh, and a, a pathway that all of our crooked places are made straight now in Jesus' name. That you're perfecting all that is lacking in us in Jesus' name. That you're causing us to walk on the high places of the earth. That all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus are binding, are binding into all of us in Jesus' name. That we're filled with, with wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Jesus Christ, your son. That you're filling us with that, Lord. That you're filling us with knowing the depth and width and height and breadth of your love towards us in Christ Jesus. That you cause us to walk in paths of righteousness for your name's sake. That you're filling us with all wisdom, godly wisdom, godly knowledge, godly counsel, godly understanding and the fear of the Lord. That you're bringing in the prodigal children. You're bringing, no matter if they're 100 years old, you're bringing them into the kingdom. Prodigals are coming home, God. We ask you to send the angels to help serve, to bring them in, Lord Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for doing a work on the lost ones that, they, that families are grieving over. Tonight, it's the night for miraculous changes in Jesus' name. Father, thank you that you are a good shepherd. You lead us into green. I thank you, Lord, that you're leading all of us into green pastures and besides still waters, that you are anointing our head with oil and that our cup is overflowing, that you restore our soul, that you prepare a table before us in the presence of all of these enemies and they have to go in Jesus' name that your rod and your staff comfort us. Surely goodness and mercy is following every one of us. I bind it into all of us, Lord, all the days of our lives, and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you that it is written, by your stripes we are healed, that we overcome Satan with the blood of the Lamb. And the word of our testimony, that, that the Holy Spirit has given us revelation knowledge, has given us uh, peace and understanding in the things of the Spirit. Thank you, Lord God, that you that you are quickening to us the things that we need to deal with, the things we need to let go of, that you're quickening us by your Spirit, that you're causing us to run after you, God, with all of our heart. Lord God, thank you for anointing us with fresh oil from heaven, truth from heaven, life from heaven, resurrection life, resurrection life, Lord, I bind into every heart every soul, every spirit, resurrection, life tonight, be birthed more in a deeper, in a greater dimension than ever before, Lord. Prepare us for the times ahead of us. You said to continue in whatever you're doing until that day. So, Lord, keep us steady, keep us fixed, keep us moving forward, and, and get, give us great, that we don't make decisions that are wrong, God. Out of this or that or this, let us hear the voice of God, the truth. Let it be confirmed over and over before we make decisions, Lord, so that we stay on that right path. In Jesus' name, protect us, guide us. Keep holy angels around our homes. I know in every home with the blood of Jesus, every doorpost, every window, every life, every car, every um, dwelling place, every job, and all our finances. 
I ask for the anointing of the Spirit and the blood covering over everything that you've given us, Lord. These are all from you. Everything's from you. And we thank you for it. And we dedicate everything we have back to you to be used for your glory in Jesus' name. And open doors that seem to be closed. Lord, I'm seeing you opening doors. I see your hand literally walking to doors and big doors. But it's like dead, empty places. He's opening doors, and I'm not sure what's on the other side. But some of you are going to have doors open for you. Be aware that it's tonight the Lord's fulfilling that in your life. Now, Lord, I give it all to you. I thank you for the quickening of your spirit, the blood covering over all of us, and for the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Linda knows, thank you for watching, honey. We pray for Tim. We pray for Tim. Keep us posted. And I, I will go back on all these prayer requests. I, and you know I will. I will do that. And I will get them to the, the ones that need to go over to for more prayer. And everybody watching this or read these will be praying also and agreeing with you. There's great power in agreement. There's great power in agreement. People that love the Lord and agree. Um that's why our prayer team, because we agree with the, we get the word and we put it out there and we agree in Jesus' name. So thank you for being my friend. Thank you for sharing this. Thank you for sh Sheila Lewis Brown. Oh my goodness, honey, it's so good to see your name on here. And I just love you and I love your music and your beautiful family. And there's Amy. Hi, precious Amy. Long time friend. So precious, so precious. I, I'm I'm looking at Amy and I'm thinking, um, I was thinking maybe we, we could have a meeting here before long. That is out of the question. South Carolina is one of the highest states in the nation right now for COVID. And we've got people sick everywhere. Shelby and I will never. I don't know how the devil got in on us because it's a plague. Joni, hi, honey. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Um, because it's a plague. And you know... You know how we have pray for everybody. The state won't touch us. It's a plague sent from the devil to kill. And it's left a lot of after effects on a lot of us. So we're now saying out loud, and we just pray that this, this COVID or not any of these plagues can ever touch us again. We have got to agree. The blood of Jesus Christ delivers us from the devil. And these are... Patsy Shannon, honey, and Sheila. Oh my goodness, Diane, Greg. I haven't been able. To look, I haven't been looking over there because I can't. I got to stay in the spirit, and it's it, it kind of messes me up when I. But I'm out of that now, so it's so good. I'm gonna go back and try to see your name, some of your names. Let me go to the top and come down. I just love you. I love you. You're my friends. You're my sister and brother in Christ. Uh, actually, you're like family to us. But anyway, so Shelby and I have gone back to the mask and back to washing our hands and not being around a lot of people because we cannot, we, we know to use wisdom. Rachel Catherine, honey, hi, and Ashley Daniel Parker and four other people are watching right there. And Ashley, and Dr. So, I love you, Dr. So, Carolyn, Deborah. Well, what I was going to say, South Carolina, two days ago, we were number three in the nation for hospitalizations in South Carolina and number 11 for uh, people with COVID. But everybody else I talked to said they have no idea how many has COVID here because most people aren't reporting it. They're doing tests now and doctoring themselves through um you know, um, all kind of ways without ever going to the hospital where anybody's getting a record. And they're saying that they bet 50% 50 of the people around here have COVID. And everywhere I go, people are saying they have COVID. They're sick. They're really sick. And then there's two people I know right now that are really sick. And that it's not COVID, but they cough and they can't quit coughing. They, their throats are messed up. They're on antibodies. They've been tested two or three times. They're negative. But it's really, it's crazy. There's just stuff that like we've never seen. So God has to protect us. 
I don't fear anything. I don't fear anything because we, you know, we're not going out of here to East Red for us to go out here after that big angel delivered us. Actually, my husband would be gone if that angel hadn't come. That really was an angel sent from God as a servant to serve us, and he did. and gave Shelby energy to, to make it. I am so thankful. I am so thankful. I just pray all everybody bounces back, and this stuff is what... Now, I did have someone tell me that, um, you know, my granddaughter just, just became a doctor, and she was telling, I think, uh, her mother that next summer this end, this COVID would be just like a bad cold by next summer. It'll be played out. But who, who knows? We pray nothing else comes in. Nothing else can ever touch us like that in Jesus' name. Any of us in Jesus' name. But anyway, so I'm, we're not having any kind of meeting. We're just trying to stay. We're going to. I can, what the Lord's called me to do is right here at my dining room table. And uh, the kids, well, you know, that we're still going to the grocery store. We know when to go when there's not very many people in there. And they say masks don't work. But let me tell you, that's an injustice to, to people. Masks do work. The people work in the hospital wear a mask and they don't, they don't get sick. The, where the problem is they don't tell you to change them often. You can't wear them all day. You've got to change them off them, but they do work. That's what they've used in the hospital for generations. And I use them in, the, in working with TB and AIDS and everything you can think of. The masks work. The only per, the nurses that have problems that I know of, of course, I've been, you know, I worked for several years. Well, if you got stuck with the needle, some of them came down with whatever. That's very serious. But the masks do protect you. And I I know how we caught it. It wasn't it wasn't why we were out like that. It was something I know I just know where it came from because it happened like four days later, three or four days later, I started and actually it was only on Sunday night I started coughing, a dry cough. And I told I said, Yo, I don't know why I'm coughing. Well, by Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Well, Doctor So came over here and checked me. And I was positive. So I'm just, I, I, we're careful. That's what I can tell you. We love the Lord. We love y'all. And we're going to stick around here and be careful and stay healthy so we can so we can all stay together here. And I pray that same health on all, and protection on all of you. We all serve the same God. And he loves us. And it's 1030. And so next Sunday night, I'll probably I'll probably try to keep going on this a little bit, but who knows? There's there's a few things I haven't shared, you know I, that I haven't shared. I say I don't teach. That's why I tell you to look up everything yourself. I try to share what I've learned through the years, and um, I haven't taught. I haven't shared about the tabernacle, which is huge, which uh, for me. It, it, you know, it just helped me understand my walk in the spirit. And I haven't shared about, um, something else came to me today. But, you know, I've gone here every Sunday night now for what? How long has it been? How long has it been? Two years, a year and a half? I don't even know. That's a, and we've missed two, maybe three nights I don't even think it's been three. I think it's been two. I don't know. But anyway, uh, there was something else I thought of today I have not shared that would, you know, that has a lot in it. I, mean, I try to share what, what I've walked through and it's ministered to me with you because it's his life. It's his word. Okay. I love you. I'm going to I hug you. I hold y'all in my heart. Every one of you. And the ones I know that are going through anything, I'm, I'm with you. In the mornings, I'm calling you out by name. And I just, especially if you're having problems, and I know about it, I'm asking God to do miraculous things, miraculous things in your life, miraculous. Remember, your enemy is the devil. So wherever there's stuff going on, you know who's behind it. Jesus came that you'd have life and have it abundantly. Now, in this emotional healing, the inner healing, deliverance ministry, 
a lot of the problem, this flesh that we have to let go of things that happened to us or whoa, came down in the bloodline through generational curses and things. Some things we opened the door ourselves because we, we didn't know how to react to things. It doesn't matter. That's why I say it doesn't matter who, if you never had a home or never, it doesn't matter how poor you are if you've never had anything. It doesn't matter. Or if you've ever been in the church, Jesus has a plan for you. And uh, what he wants to do is to get this stuff out of us so we can live in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the aim for all of us, to live in the righteousness. The kingdom of God is within you. And it's how much you let go of, how much you're willing to pay the price to work to get the stuff out of you and yield and all. Is right. The kingdom of God is within you. It's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's where he's trying to take you. So no matter how screwed up things are right now, it's the devil you're fighting no matter what happened to you or what it is going on. The enemy is in it to mess you up. And you have to remember, it's not people. The enemy and that person is working to mess you up. So they need help too. You should. That's why you can forgive. I realize they need help too, and they don't even know how. They don't have enough sense to know they need help a lot of times. That's where I was because I just thought, you know, I was doing pretty good till the Lord put the light on some. He puts light on things. I love you. I bless you. I'm praying whatever you're praying for, by next week there'll be changes. You'll see the light at the end of the tunnel, that you're at the end of that tunnel. We're seeing that. We're agreeing. You're at the end of the tunnel, and you're coming out in the light this week, starting right now. It's moving in Jesus' name. I love you. You can get a hold of me, mtmlinda at aol.com. Uh, a prayer, uh, no, M, a pr let's see, MTM prayer at gmail.com I think there's a prayer I don't know Linda Jackson needs somebody needs to put it on here about the prayer um, well and you can message me you can um, text me you can um, I don't take calls I'm getting a lot of calls from foreign countries I do I'm not taking any calls I can't I cannot do it I can't and do what I'm doing so um, but you can get a hold of me. So you you if you can get here on the this you can yeah, you can send a notification on Facebook. And listen, tell people they I'm telling you, I went over there and there's hundreds of people over here wanting to be my friend under Linda Blankenship. And they can't. And I can't get it over. And I'm trying to get the message out more and more. You can follow MTM. You can join. There's 900 and something people on MTM, not Masters, but MTM, and you'll get everything because I share it there. And then there's Masters Touch Ministry. You can follow it. And and actually, um, Facebook has been wanting to pay me to do some things, but I'm not getting into that because I don't want any advertisement. I, I, but we've gotten large enough. And this started about two months ago, three months ago. That they've been asking about some things, but I'm not going to do it. So I, I don't want, I'm not getting in all that. After you get so big, they do that, but I'm not doing that. I don't, I don't want to advertise on anything around me. I'm on here to tell you about Jesus Christ and him crucified for you and for me. And the life that we now live, we live by the faith of the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. So with that, I'm saying good night, and I love you. I really love you from my heart.